This pandemic has kept us on our toes. We've been on high alert, and along the way, oh, and along the way, this virus has raised countless questions for our society. At first, we started asking questions like, "What about a vaccine, or maybe herd immunity, to try to spark solutions?" Then, finally, after new data and information came out. We would try to change our opinions. We had opinions that changed. So, these are all. Some of us might want to wanted to get the vaccine, while others might have wanted to stay away from it. That's all well and good, but that could be one example of change that we could have experienced during this pandemic. Yet, I believe there are many more that we haven't realized yet. Hello, my name is Eduardo Diaz. I'm 12 years old, and I have the privilege of talking to you all today about change and reconnecting with your identity. Just recently, I moved to Guangzhou, which allows me to speak from experience. Now, how do we embrace change? What does change mean? Is it even good for us? These are questions you might have. The truth is, change is fascinating. It's even more interesting when it happens inside of us—a change of our identity. It is incredible how much effect our identity has on the world around us. To show this, have you ever heard the saying, "You are the average of your five closest friends"? Well, this shows that your identity is being affected by other people's identity. Now, say your best friend does a test, your identity is now affecting their identity. And let's say your identity changes, and if you've kept your friend, their identity most likely changes as well. But it's important to remember that these changes aren't always minimal; they can affect your friend more than you. So let's not ignore them. To help us become better versions of ourselves and help us recognize change within us, I'm going to take you through the three R's: reflect, reconstruct, or redo, and resume. They are a key strategy to help us embrace change. So let's begin with our first star: reflect. I have a question for the audience: How many of you occasionally reflect to try to find change in your identity? When we reflect, we think of the past, which for me is a great thing. I think a lot of people say, "Your past doesn't represent you." Which is somewhat true, but what we tend to forget is that it once did, and we can learn from it. Our first star teaches us to pause and reflect before we move on too quickly. Here are a few ways to conduct that pause and look back at our past: writing and reading a daily journal, looking at photos, and talking about past events with friends and family. With these strategies, you might start to find changes like these. Maybe you've picked up new interests, like. For example, when I look at my life during this pandemic, I've picked up a new sport, touch rugby, and maybe you have more time for habits. So I had more time to exercise and read, and there might be some changes in your friends and family. Maybe someone's moved, or maybe you've had experienced changes after losing somebody. I also realized that my family's been calling each other more through Zoom calls, and that leads me to my next point: our world has become much more virtualized. For example, when I was telling my friends, "Hey, I'm gonna give a TED talk," they were like, "You're gonna make a TikTok? No, a TED talk. That's what I mean." So that shows that could be another change that you might have experienced. That's all well and good that I know how I've changed, but how does that affect my life today? How can I make that information important? You might ask. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that leads me to my second R. Where we can use this information in a super cool way. Reconstruct or redo. I think our lives will be boring if we don't change and live the exact same way every single day. Although some of us might like the repetition, I think it's always good if we change the way we interact with each other and approach the world. So let's look at the present and see how we're doing. The truth is, we've been locked down for months, and we've changed. Some changes might have been for the better, while some of them might have hurt us. 
You might have felt like this pandemic has made you feel more drained or tired. But at the same time, you might have felt like you've learned healthy lessons and dropped bad habits. So here are some negative changes that you might have experienced. Maybe there's a change in your attitude. You feel more tired. Maybe you feel like you've, you're lacking discipline. You haven't read that, but that book that's been on your desk since day one. Maybe you haven't been as connected with your family. Maybe it's because of distance and not being able to visit them. But at the good time, there's good changes. So maybe changes in your behavior for the better. Maybe you've learned healthy lessons. Maybe you've dropped bad habits and learned good ones. And socially, we all might have newer strength in friendships. And we all know those online Zoom calls taught us some problem-solving skills. So let's take the time to take the changes that have hurt us and adjust them or reconstruct them back into positive. There's our reconstruct part. But let's also take the changes that have benefited us and keep doing them. There's our redo part. An effective way of reconstructing and redoing is to change our daily routine. How, we, how and when we wake up, how we interact with each other and how we approach the world. All of this has an effect to our identity. So we agree that we're gonna change our routine, right? All right then. How can we make sure that we're changing our routine, yet consistently keeping it? Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is where I present to you the checklist. Yes, it kind of deserves to be capitalized. Let me tell you a story. I've always loved planes. Ever since I was four, an airport has been a theme park for me. Seeing all the bright planes neatly parked in their spots truly was a joy for me. I remember one day, and getting into, I was boarding my flight from Dallas to China, um, and I was board, I remember boarding the plane and looking towards my left to see the cockpit door, and experiencing a kick of joy once I saw that it was open. I went to my seat and got all my things ready for the flight, but soon a flight attendant came over and asked, "Hey, do you want to go see the cockpit?" Turns out that later it was my dad who actually asked if the flight attendant could invite me over. Well, I gotta say, thanks, Dad, because I loved it. I remember creeping up to the cockpit door and sheepishly looking in. The pilots graciously invited me in, but, and, I continue, and I had a great conversation with them. But then I saw a small stack of papers that were organized in the corner. I wondered what they were. I continued talking to the pilots and having a great experience. They even showed me their whole flight plan, including fuel amounts, weights, altitudes, and routes. I was in wonderland. Yet the first thing I did when I got off that flight was to get out my phone and search up, what do pilots need? It turns out those were checklists. And as I've grown up, I've continued to study how pilots fly planes and how they use checklists to help keep our flight experience smooth and to keep and to reduce the chance of failure during flight. So this is when I was initially introduced to checklists, but checklists aren't only used in the aviation industry. How do I know? Well, Sage Journals reports that almost 90% of quality leaders said that their hospital uses checklists to prevent errors. Vuvio blogs adds that the same is true in the finance industry, where some fund managers use checklists when making investment research and decisions. So what is a checklist, literally? Well, Wikipedia says, a checklist is a type of job aid used to reduce failure by compensating for potential limits of human memory and attention, blah, blah, blah. I think that's a little too complicated. Here's a simpler way, five words, list of things to do. Personally, I've been using checklists every morning to help me remember things for school. And after using them for a more, little more than three months now, I've seen a significant improvement in my attitude and accuracy. Even if your checklists aren't about school, they can still benefit you, especially in helping you keep a stable and healthy routine. For example, if every morning you wanna have that discipline to take the trash out, a checklist will make you more likely to do that. And with that same discipline that you learn with doing that task, you'll be able to complete other and more difficult tasks in your life. Soon, you too will be able to see a change in your identity for the better. 
So one of these days, why don't you write a list of things to do, a checklist, in the morning? Start with a title, summing up what your checklist is about. You might have many, so it's important not to get them confused. Then, write your tasks, including the ones you do unconsciously. Here's an example of mine. My morning routine. Okay, sometimes you might have thought that I was a little too detailed. Like, breakfast eaten? Who's going to forget that? I don't only write them in to not forget them. I write them in to help me do things and help me keep a stable routine. If you run through the same routine checklist every morning, you will find that your identity changes in a good way. Let me just make a quick side note here that your checklist doesn't have to look exactly like mine. There are many types of checklists in the, in the world. And, but with any checklist, though, you'll find yourself starting to forget less things, thinking you'll approach the world in a different way, and you'll think differently. On the topic on forgetting things, City Credit Department reports that they lost almost $1 billion due to human error. That's a lot. And that proves that we can't always trust ourselves to do important tasks, but checklists can help. So this is why checklists are key in so many industries, as they should be for us. So after you've written your checklists, start doing. Our final R, resume. After you've put, your, put in your checklists on paper, let's put them into action. And here are a few ways you can do that. Put your checklists in a memorable place, such as a kitchen counter or a nightstand. Get a buddy. Whether it's a parent or a friend, a buddy will always help you to achieve your goals. They also serve as good reminders in case you forget to run through a checklist. Set a goal. Try to run through your checklist for a full day, then for two, then for three, and so on. Just remember to take your time to achieve your goal. No goal is ever achieved by rushing the process. To wrap everything up, I want to remind you that it's all about you. No one is going to force you to improve your life, and no one is going to do it for you. You have to take the initiative to go ahead and get it done. And that's not only with what we're talking about today. You must take initiative in everything in life. You can have all the ideas, but it's useless if you don't do. My objective today was to encourage you, but it's your decision. Are you going to ignore change and live your life the exact same way you lived it yesterday? Or are you going to strive to pay attention, reconnect with your life, and live it in a more fruitful way than ever? Just remember, you'll only improve your life and its successes if you change something you do daily. Thank you very much.